Welcome to the Vantage Point's new series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. In the first year, we produced 73 episodes on surnames. With your support, I hope to develop another year's worth of genealogical fun that will feature names from the South and Appalachia, and perhaps even elsewhere from the country. As with the first season, I want to focus on the surnames that have been in the country since before the Civil War. As a reminder, the Industrial Revolution in America began in earnest during and after the Reconstruction. The economic explosion that resulted from the expansion of factories and the construction of railroads attracted millions of people to the United States. Since a person my age would most likely know the names of double great-grandparents or great-grandparents who arrived in American ports in recent years, there's little need for my work to help them. <laughs> so today on the Vantage Point, we'll venture back a couple of centuries to see the origins and meanings of pre-Civil War family names in the American South and Appalachia. I hope you'll join me. Number one, Bean. Bean or Bean. When I received the request to cover Bean, I was excited because I have in-laws named Bean. And in fact, I would say that most everyone living in Powell Valley of East Tennessee is either related to a Bean or they know someone who's part of the family. If you're like me, I initially thought that the name was given to a person named Jack who traded cows for beans, but that's not the case. Given the region in which we live, there's a good chance that it's an Irish or Scottish name that was shortened from McBean or even McVan, which is actually pronounced McBan, I think. Irish speakers, correct me on that one, please. In Scottish Gaelic, it's spelled the means, and it means the son of Beethan. In Ireland, Bean may also be shortened version of all these Gaelic names, where Betha is an Irish word for life. At the end of the day, I think we're safe in saying that Bean can be an Irish or Scottish surname. Numbers two and three, I'm going to put them together because they're so closely, well, they sound kind of alike. You'll see in just a second. Alverson and Iverson. As reported by the Dictionary of American Surnames, Alverson is an alternate way of spelling Halverson, and it means the son of Halver. It's not to be confused with Iverson, which is the son of Ivar. Both Alverson and Iverson are originally Scandinavian names, and their presence in Great Britain and Ireland is evidence of their medieval settlement of the Vikings. If you know a little about Norse sagas, you will have no doubt heard of Ivar the Boneless. He's also a verified historical figure and was portrayed as a prominent character in the TV series The Vikings. In the series, he was astutely portrayed by Alex Huff Anderson, a native of Denmark. Number four, Crumley. As we'll see in a minute, Crumley is not an alternate form of Chumley. Chumley's roots are English, but Crumley's origin is among the Gales of Ireland. Crumley originated as <laughs> in counties Donegal and Derry in what are now two different countries. Donegal is in the Republic of Ireland, and Derry is in Northern Ireland, a key province of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. You might note that the original meaning of and hence Crumley meant bent hero. I hope that his being bent wasn't due to a painful form of arthritis. My wife's grandfather suffered from that condition and it was awful. At the end of the day though, I could think, I'm pretty confident that we can say that Crumley is an Irish surname. Number five, Chumley. In Henry Harrison's book on the surnames of the United Kingdom, Chumley is presented as a derivative of the toponymic Chumley. Now, as far as I can tell, the pronunciation of Chumley, as we would spell it in America, and the way it's spelled over there in England, is the same, but perhaps a viewer from England can clarify its pronunciation. Nonetheless, Harrison says that the name originated in Devon, but it could also have originated in Cheshire, England, where Chumley Castle sits today. Interestingly, Chumley family has owned the estate since the 12th century. The current Marquis of uh, Chumley, or Chumley calls the castle and the estate home. So I think at the end of the day, we, we can be confident that Chumley is an English surname. Number six, Bunt. When I received this request, I immediately started craving a lemon Bunt cake. That made me wonder if there's a connection between the surname and one of my favorite baked delights. As it turns out, Bunt is typical of short, simple names, uh, they can have multiple origins, like my last name, Van. Uh, Bunt in the South and Southern Appalachia is most likely of English derivation, but arrived in England with the Norman French in 1066. The Normans introduced Bunnet. Now, Bunnet 
bunt it. It doesn't sound like bunt, but let's, let's pursue this a second. Bunt in England is almost always a shortened form of that French name, but in other parts of the country it could also be Dutch as in Van de Bunt in Holland, which is where it originated, and it was given to a person who lived near Bunt Grass. Bunt Grass. In Germany, it was used to identify a person associated with fur that had black and white coloration. I think at the end of the day, we could say that it's either English from a uh, French origin with the Normans, or it could be Dutch. Number seven, Deadman. Deadman. <laughs> if you're like me, I assume that Deadman was a name given to a person who, well, looked kind of like a corpse. But that assumption, I'm happy to report, is, was not the case. It's English in origin, and it was originally spelled Debenham, a name associated or assigned to a family that lived in a village in Suffolk, England, near the Deben River. The village of that name is still in existence. Deadman and Deadman are both forms of that larger and older toponymic. It's helpful to remember that surnames were often based on a physical or mental characteristic of the person who wore it or bore it, a place, or an occupation. At the end of the day, Deadman was derived from a place and thankfully not a pale and stiff person. Number eight, Godsey. Okay, <laughs> I must admit, I'm going to show my age here, that when I received this request, my mind went straight to my youth when I sat transfixed to our black and white TV to watch the Waltons. It ran from 1972 to 1981. One of the main non-family characters was a storekeeper named Ike Godsey, played by Joe Connolly. It appears that the name came straight to America from the Germanic-speaking countries of the continent, not Great Britain. It's derived from the German Gutz, which could have been adopted from any number of names with God or good in it. Uh, English speakers in colonial America probably read the name and most likely used phonics to pronounce the name Godzi. <laughs> And at the end of the day, I think that we can, we're safe in saying that, uh, that Godsey is a German name, a German surname. Number nine, Scogners or Conyers. The surname Conyers derives from two places in northern France. <laughs> saint Ewas, I think is how you pronounce it. saint, saint Ewas, or Conyers in Sarth. Scogners is an Americanized form of Conyers. It's found mostly in the south, in Mississippi specifically. At the end of the day, the French-speaking Normans introduced Conyers into York, England, where residents changed its French form to the Anglicized form that we see in America and England today. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you. I apologize for being away for a couple of months. Uh, during that time, uh, I was teaching a lot and traveling to Europe, and also I lost my mother. Uh, who was 88 years old. I was blessed to have her for that long, but uh, she sure is missed. Now, if the Lord is willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be back again with episode two in our new series. Take care and God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.